Hello, good morning to me. My last name is Lavianos, so it's, it's quite difficult, I understand. So, um, as Robert said, we're quite excited about the transaction security broker, uh, the TSB, uh, and we, pro we present a solution that we have that basically we utilize TSB in order to create a platform that we can introduce secure approvals inside a corporate environment uh, as seamlessly as possible. So let's start with the basic question. Would we ever rely, or you rely, on an email in order to approve something that's very, very critical? Just an email and then get a reply and you're sure that it's approved by the correct people, by the significant stakeholders. Personally, I wouldn't. So what if you could? And this is where the TSB comes into place that will help us in this effort. Uh, let's take, for example, corporate boards meetings, right? Uh, especially in this era that we have COVID, etc., having physical meetings is very, very challenging. And also, it's time consuming to plan these things, etc. So having board meetings remotely, it's very time efficient, but of course, we need to, be, to have a secure way that every person, every member of the board uh, to give approvals and we to know that the approval each one that took is the correct person. So it's very important to verify that this is the approver and also it's very important to do that in a time efficient manner. So we introduced 7L Seamless Secure Approval Platform that basically we have the following benefits. First of all, and most important, we, we can integrate that in a seamless way. So it's very important when you introduce a solution not to disrupt the current flow of the corporate environment, right? You don't want to change all these things. At the same time, so we need to be seamlessly integrated with no modifications. And we'll see in a bit how we can achieve that. Second, it should be secure, right? And here, the Securities Transaction Security Broker uh, will help us in guaranteeing the approver's identity. So we know that each approval is from the person that is supposed to, to, to be. It should be efficient, so quickly take decisions because we move, we're, we're living in a very, in a world that moves everything very fast. And also, the whole flow should be usable we should not sacrifice usability versus security. We, we try to accommodate these both. Many times it's not possible, but in this case, uh, we present a way that the usability is very important because if something is usable, then it will be adapted easier from users and will actually use it. So the solu our solution comprises of three main, uh, four main things. Uh, the core, the, the heart of the system is the secure transaction security broker uh, that basically is the heart of the platform and handles the signing of the requests and the responses. We have our business logic, which is the blue tile that has been in previous presentations, that basically is responsible that and integrates seamlessly in the corporate environment. In this case, we will see that we can integrate in an email, basically, utilize email that it's very, very common, but can be extended to whatever decision-making platform the corporate has. And basically the custom business logic that we have, the server there, we handle all the requests that come, manage them, and communicate with the DSB. Uh, the third element is a mobile application. So it's a secure mobile application that basically each of the stakeholders has and can easily see all the requests that come and needs to take an action. It will have the flexibility to see uh, all the common documents, review, and then take a decision. And the fourth element, which is an optional, is basically we can run this secure application over a secure phone for top end-to-end -to -end security uh, cases, uh, we run this application in a secure phone that we, that we have that runs on a hardware operating system that basically connects via 
a secure VPN to the company's headquarters. So end-to-end, -end, uh, security is in place everywhere. Uh, a few words about the DSB. It has been explained in more detail by the previous uh, presentation in the next presentation, I believe. Standalone engine integrates the, the smart key attributes uh, in HSM. The good thing for us is that exposes REST API that we can utilize uh, easily. Uh, retain state, so it keeps track of all the requests and their stats, etc. And we can have customizable policies like uh, anonymous decisions, quorum, uh, you can block and block keys, etc. And this is our solution. We're going to detail into each one of these and we'll see in a bit how easily it can tap into any corporate environment. So everything starts with an email. So we have a user that basically says, I need to get a request approval in order to buy a company. And this is a big thing and I need the board member to approve that. So everything starts with an email that gets sent to a designated, let's say, mailbox and sends uh, all the accompanying documents that needs to be reviewed in order all the stakeholders to take their decision. And this basically sent to the email server that every and, uh, corporate environment or any company has. Then in this case, it's our business logic. The intelligence here is that through IMAP, which is a standard protocol for accessing email, we receive all the requests that come here. So, and on each of these requests, in this case, the request by a company, we create a request that needs to be sent to all the board members. So our business logic there, parse the email, creates, based on the email, the type of the email, creates a request with specific policy. In this case, let's say it's an anonymous. Um, uh, everybody needs to approve that. And we see that it will communicate and send that request to the transaction security broker. And after we have the decision, what the stakeholders will decide, uh, the business logic server will take the status update from the TSB that this request is either approved or rejected. And then it will inform back the requester here via normal email that with the outcome of this decision. So it's a very important element. Then we have the TSB here. The TSB after it takes the request, it informs all the end users, the stakeholders, know that they have a pending request to approve or reject. So it enforces the policy, it gathers all the responses and based on the response and on the policy, we have an outcome that this request uh, for coming is approved and keeps a state for this request in order to uh, communicate it back to the chain. And the, at the end user, we have the secure approval application, which is a very easy to use application. Uh, we try to keep it as minimal as it gets, and at the same time try to, use, to make it as usable, uh, and can be installed basically in iOS, in Android, so in all platforms. Uh, let's take a, a quick a view how this application would look like and what is the flow from the end user perspective. So uh, when the user, when the, let's say the corporate member opens the app, sees this tab that's basically all the pending approvals, all the requests that he needs to take an action, right? He needs to review to understand what he would be deciding, he would be deciding, and also knows that, okay, this is the time that was created and I have one day to think about it, read the material and approve. Uh, and here would be, can be a list of anything that he needs to decide on. He, let's say if he clicks on the acquisition of Aqua Inc and goes into a detailed page in which he can review the actual documents, right? And by clicking this, it opens a default PDF viewer 
of the app. He can read the PDF uh, and so on. Also here we can see also the <clears throat> other approvers, other members of the board, what they, they're doing. And after he had concluded, let's say, yes, it's a great deal. I need to approve this because I, I want to buy this company. We slide and we click the button, but basically we send, yes, I approve this request. And then it moves into the, into the completed tab that I have completed the specific request. So you can see that only with a few screens, it's very, very quick and seamless and very usable how to review what I need to review and, and take an action. So the most important thing about this is that we can seamlessly integrate with any company's or corporate infrastructure. In this case, we just used email. So by using, let's say, a kind of insecure medium, we have a way through PSP to know that the specific request is approved, signed by all stakeholders, so it's safe and we know the outcome of this decision. Now, imagine that, except email, we can utilize, utilize practically anything. We don't want to disrupt how the corporate company operates, right? It can be email, we can have ERP system, any basically decision-making system that somehow exposes part of this flow, we can integrate, and because we specialize in, in general in custom integrations, uh, we can connect and basically existing flows enhance the security of these flows and provide all these capabilities. So in the previous diagram, basically the only that would change is this. Here was the email, it could be practically anything. Now, for cases that we want top end-to-end -end security, we have another product, which is this SCT 501, that basically it's a secure phone that has, runs hardened operating system that's based on Android, Android open source project, in which we have done some work, we have removed unnecessary insecure apps, we have removed some virus attack vectors, so we know it's a clean uh, hardened OS. Uh, and inside there we have our VPN client that basically can connect to the headquarters uh, of the company via secure tunnel. Um, and we know that by using this product from the end user device till the authorization, everything is secure because it's very important when the, we want top level security, even the end user device to be sure that it's secure because if the end user device is not secure, then and it's compromised, then the rest of the thing could be considered also compromised. Besides, let's say, the solution that we just uh, displayed through this, uh, this product, we can provide secure communication, we can have secure video conf calls, messaging, and so on. By utilizing this product as well, the previous platform becomes like that. Basically, it's almost the same, but all the end user devices uh, initiate a VPN connection. They connect to the, via the corporate VPN inside the secure uh, corporate network. So we we'll have later on also a demo for anyone that is interested that can show the approval platform, the app, and the phone as well for anyone that is interested. Now, a few words about us. Our company is Seven International. We're founded 2007. We have office in, in New York, in London, and Athens, Greece. We have a global clientele. Uh, and the things that we specialize is basically providing secure and reliable uh, custom software solutions. We use hyper, uh, we write 
we do custom integration, we specialize in that. And also by utilizing premium infrastructure and, and writing uh, high performance software, we provide in most of the cases a turnkey solution to our clients. Uh, we don't specialize in specific industry, we target all industries because the custom software that we provide it's industry agnostic. So we can provide any solution to any industry out there. Uh, another um, uh, scenario for a project that we're working on is basically for a project that we're doing in New York, is basically transforming an existing building into a smart building. Uh, and we provide a turnkey solution in which VR custom software and custom integration capabilities, we tap and integrate to various systems of the company, of the, of the building. Uh, we integrate with actual physical security, so parts of the physical security get integrated in our custom software and perform certain actions. Uh, and also integrate with the Wi-Fi network, wi networking, and also we provide a private cloud inside there. Now, uh, I want to focus on a specific application that we're building, which is a secure room, but basically it's a room that swiping a card is not the only thing that we, the user can do in order to access that room. It would need uh, also an authorization from authorized personnel in order besides the card swiping to enter the specific room. And also depending on the time of the day, the policies could differ. You could need one approval, manual approval or two. If it's in the midnight, then probably two people need to approve that. If it's inside the day that inside the room many people walk, walk, one is enough because other eyes could see the person, etc. So that's something that we're doing, and TSB is utilized for that purpose uh, because the person that will authorize, who perform the manual authorization, needs to be verified that he is the one. So just to conclude with the approval platform, we believe that it has infinite applications. In this case, we just saw that a corporate board, let's say, scenario or a secure room access. But I'm sure that we, we can find an applied specific uh, a platform to almost anything that requires secure approvals. Um, the important is that we can seamlessly integrate, so it's very easy without disturbing the flow of the company. And we can do that via custom uh, integrations. And especially for, in the case that we want top level security, the hardening phone that we provide uh, is a nice fit into that solution. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, happy to answer them. Thank you very much, Angelos. Um, I think we're not supposed to be very close to each other anyway. So. <laughs> okay, um, it's a it's, uh, um, Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm actually uh, uh, quite surprised, or actually, you know, this is when we talk about smart key attributes, you know, that this kind of a powerful thing that we have built into the HSMs, and, you know, if we use it for multi-signature of digital documents, uh, Prosa wants to use it for uh, uh, opening up documents, you know, uh, approvals, you know, and um, you now built it into a house to uh, control access to a room and you know um, as, as you said you know we have timing rules there also it's not just uh, quorum rules it's also timing rules you know in the middle of the night you need more people and you know a lot of these uh, you know we, we see all these movies you know where they where they uh, corrupt the building or enter a building and uh, they have you know just swipe a card and you get in you know and you suddenly realize oh we can make this really horrible for all these uh, criminals that want to uh, get in you know it's 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 the power of multi-signature you know it's it is not sufficient that one person is bad you need several people so you need several people threaten several people to actually get access to crypto assets to uh, get into a room to do things that uh, you cannot do. So this is, makes it more 
complicated for criminals and more secure for the rest of us. So, but this is kind of a very, a very fascinating example. Thank you very much. But um, we have quite a few minutes uh, time to uh, for questions. Is there are there any uh, questions? On the floor here. Yeah. Hi. Um, I found it very interesting that you um, that you talked about this hardened operating system uh, instead of just approving it on a on a phone app. Um, I know this is a very difficult question to answer, but uh, from how much more security do you gain by this hardened operating system, or let me phrase it the other way around, up to which say um, maximum value of the approval would you or the approval key? And you cannot only make dependent on the approval, but on the approval key. Uh, would you think it's, it's appropriate to use a phone app and from when on do you need to, to really think about better solutions about about hard an operating system or maybe different devices? Thank for the question. Um, it depends. It depends how much security you want to add, right? Yes. Um, and basically depend on the stakeholders and what they decide. It's totally a kind of a business, let's say, question, in the sense that if the approval that I'm giving would trigger a multi-million dollar decision, then you need to use the top level security you can get. But if, on the other end, the decision that you will give your approval or not, it's for I don't know, buying something that is 1,000 euros, then, okay, it's okay not to have, let's say, a hardened phone. So it depends on the application and what basically the stakeholder that will use the specific app will have to decide at the end. So. Okay. One more question. Of course, it's in the back of the room, so I'm walking back for all those people so online uh, listening in. So, George. The question is, what is the effect of having your phone hacked or your tablet hacked if you're doing this uh, kind of transaction? So if you have a compromised device, then basically you can assume that all your keys, everything, can be hacked, right? So it can be monitored, it can be utilized in order to give approval, approvals that you're not supposed to. So basically, uh, someone can spoof that it's you, right? So uh, if you don't have security on your end device, then there's no security after that. Yeah, I think, I think the, to add on to that, so if you have one phone hacked, you know, and you have multi-signature, you're still good sure. because you need to hack all the phones, you know, that's the, uh, the power of multi-signature. But uh, a hacked phone is a, a problem, you know, so, yeah. Maybe just a remark about uh, your, your process with starting with an email. I think it, it is missing the word verification before approval. Uh, because uh, sending uh, an email that is uh, with, uh, with something that has sense uh, is not very complicated if you know the process. And I think to start with a process with an email and, uh, and you show only approval, 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 the, the danger is that uh, everybody will, will get some, some, uh, some email, approve, 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 and at the end you want not a lot of things. I think everybody who is, uh, who is doing approval has to do something else, so, uh, something more. Uh, th this is a verification because if, if everything is, uh, is working automatically, you, you have a danger. Uh, are you referring to the initiator of the approval or the end user device that have the apps? The initiator, right? Uh, on one side, you have an email. Mm -hmm. On one side, you have an email. This is the initiator. I think this this part is not secure. Yes. Mm -hmm. And at the end, you have an approver, and the approver has not to work automatically. He has to to, to do a verification, a strong verification from something, sure. external to this process. So, uh, 
because if he, he, uh, he receives the, the, the information, please approve, okay, approve, uh, you are dangerous. It's not only a remark. No, no, to, to, to add some verification in your process. Yes, yes, thank you. It's a very good point for the end user uh, devices, right? That the specific stakeholders that have, right? There should be a specific process of how they're getting these apps with their keys and, and so how they generate their keys. So that's a different process that we can elaborate. Sorry? Sorry? Ah, sorry. So, uh, yeah, that's a very good point there. And also on the initiator, uh, you're right, it's less secure at this point. We don't disturb that because we guarantee uh, the approvers at the, at the other side, they're verified and we know which these are, right? So they would know uh, who these persons are. Yeah, so, I mean, this is the, the general, I call it the CEO problem, you know, sometimes when I go to work, it's just uh, I have to sign stuff and, uh, and uh, hopefully somebody else has already read it, you know, so and then I can just approve. So, but the responsibility of approving something that's actually okay to approve is still there. It's not just suddenly ending up, oh, oh, what, I wake up and I have seven things to approve and I just slide the button and say it's approved. So, so um, there is, a, um, we had a, uh, the, the initiation of the transaction. You know, we could also uh, think of uh, the guy who initiates the transaction has to be uh, one of the approved people to do it, you know, in that sense. So, um, there is a one more question in the back here. Actually, it's not the question because we have partners with Agilos. So, uh, just um, uh, if I can add to the last question, that what we try to do here is that we already have incorporations in the approval process. Uh, to be done through email. So we try to enhance the security of it. Of course, we can find many uh, particular parts that this system can be compromised, but what we are trying to do is to get the email approval process from the unsecure level that is today to a more secure level. Then we can enhance more the system uh, by adding more security in special parts. Thank you. Okay, one more questions, and I think we're getting to the last question here. Could we initiate with a secure email? Yeah, that's a different thing, another uh, product that basically uh, we can provide secure email services that basically we can move away, you'd say, from the standard mail process have a more secure way of having email uh, by utilizing other technologies like web technologies that are probably more secure. Uh, yeah, that's also something we can hope. The important and the beauty of this is that, uh, and as Vasily said, that we enhance security uh, from plain email to a slightly to a more secure email is that we can improve all the different parts around this flow and always increase the level of the security. Uh, and the important thing is that we don't disrupt day one the flow and how the company operates, uh, which is very important uh, of the business, how they work. That's uh, also what Carla said earlier, you know, seamless integration into the business processes. Yes, exactly. So uh, thank you very much, Angelos. Uh, Actually, he's CEO of Seven Layers, so <laughs> not just uh, one of the developers. Um, um, thank you very much. Go ahead. And uh, we're about to having lunch. Um, I, I just want to remind you, uh, everybody, we have our sponsors in the back. So uh, if you want to talk to core technologies, to crypto finance, to Seven Layers, to Lipsy, they're all in the back, they have booths there, they, they are happy to uh, tell you more about their systems, what they're doing and uh, how, how possible ways to cooperate and work together. I mean, this is one of the reasons why I have these conferences, because 
even though we're on some fields we're competitors, we all work together, can work together for providing better solutions into the market. And uh, the cool thing is there's a lot of developers here, so we have we are the idea people for getting those solutions into the, to the business people. So um, the break is now till uh, 1.30, so um, please enjoy lunch. Thank you.